Hi there, welcome back. I'm Pam and we're in my kitchen again where I share with you some of my favorite recipes or those that are most requested by my friends and family. Today we're going to be making a key lime pie. Now I use that term loosely because key limes are seasonal and they're not in the grocery stores right now so we're actually going to be using a standard Persian lime. This is a very good substitute. If you had a key lime pie and you had a pie right next to it made with Persian limes and you were able to taste them both, it would be discernible, the difference. But if you're just making one or the other with either lime, you wouldn't really be able to tell the difference. And it's like I said, it's just a really good substitute when you can't find key limes. Now, what is not a good substitute is bottled lime juice, whether it be key lime or regular. Don't use bottled juice in this recipe. You need fresh to really have that great fresh flavor. Okay, so what is the difference between the two? Key limes are smaller than a regular lime. If you see them in the store, they're probably in a bag and they're green. They pick them green, they ripen and they turn yellow. And that's how you know they're ready to be used. They are seedier, they're juicier, they are more aromatic and they are more tart than a Persian lime. So there is a difference, but if you can't find them, don't let that stop you from making a key lime pie. Now, key limes uh, are called such because the, in the Florida Keys, that's where uh, the region was that they were growing them. In the 1920s, a massive hurricane came through and wiped out all the crops. And now we get our key limes from Mexico and Central America. So when you're lucky enough to see them in the store, grab a bag, but I will tell you, they are not as easy to work with as a standard lime. They're smaller, and so zesting them is more difficult, juicing them is more difficult, but it's worth it if you don't mind the trouble. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is make a really simple graham cracker crust. I like to use a plastic bag it takes one package of graham crackers. I just dump them in here. You can use a food processor. Pull it out, grind your crackers, wash it up. Um, I just, like I've told you before in my other videos, I don't like pulling that thing out when I can do something else that's just as easy and maybe even quicker. So get your rolling pin. If you don't have a rolling pin, find something you can hit these with. We are just going to smash them up until we get a really fine powder. Just take out a little bit of aggression while you're making this crust. And you know, something else I want to say, you can buy a ready-made pie crust in the store. I've never done that. So I'm going to say don't, don't do that <laughs> if you really want to make this pie taste authentic and real and fresh. So just kind of pick your bag up, look at it. I can see some crumbs that are just still a little bit bigger than I want, but this doesn't take very long. All righty, that looks good. So the next thing we're going to do Get a medium sized bowl and we're just going to dump these in there, the whole package. We're going to add some brown sugar. I'll pour the butter. A pinch of salt. Did you know that a pinch of salt equals about a sixteenth of a teaspoon? I don't measure, but um, just get a good pinch. Now we're going to mix the salt, the brown sugar, and the ground up crackers real well. Get your hand in there and break up any powder or um, brown sugar lumps that you see. And if any of it feels really hard, just toss it out. So there, our crumbs are all mixed with our brown sugar and our salt going to pour in four tablespoons of unsalted butter. 
and we're going to just mix it. You're just dampening the crumbs. Kind of like sand, like wet sand. Stir it up really well. Make sure that all the crumbs are dampened and there's no lumps. There we go. So we're going to take a pie plate. This is a nine inch pie plate, which is fine. I like to use my deep dish when I'm making this, which I've actually done. I have a pie in the refrigerator that I'm going to pull out in a few minutes when we finish the recipe. But um, so this may be a little shallow. I'm going to find out when we add the filling. Just put your crust in like that, your crust crumbs, and spread it out. And then I like to take something like a soft-sided measuring cup and just press. And I like to put my thumb along the edge of the pie plate so that the crust doesn't go beyond the rim. Just going to press this out. My oven is preheated normally uh, when I'm doing this. And once we get this in the plate and pressed in, we're going to bake it at 350 for about 10 minutes. You just want it to start to take on a little color and feel a little bit firm and not crumbly. The sides here will fall in and just let them do that, kind of push them in and then press them again. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can, yeah, sometimes you just get a little too much on the side and you need to push it back in because it wants to creep over. Make sure your bottom is evenly covered. Okay, so we're just pressing that down like that. Now I'm gonna switch this out for the one that I baked right before. So this is our baked pie crust. It was in the oven for about 10 minutes. As you can see, it's taken on a little bit of color and it's, it feels firm, kind of like a cracker or a cookie now. So now we're gonna make the filling, which is really simple. We're going to start with three egg yolks. Don't toss out the egg whites from these yolks. Put it in a little uh, glass or Tupperware container in your refrigerator and tomorrow, or whenever you've got some time, make a pavlova. I've got a really nice pavlova recipe. Or make some coconut macaroons, whatever. Egg whites are uh, what you need for both of those. This is a good tablespoon of lime zest. I've got maybe a little more than a tablespoon, but that's what I like to use. So I'm gonna put not all of it in. And like I mentioned before, zest your limes before you juice them. I made the mistake one time making this pie and I forgot to zest them. And trying to zest a lime skin that doesn't have the juice in it is nearly impossible. So we're just gonna mix this up and blend the egg yolks with the zest. Not even a minute. You just wanna get a creamy mixture. All right. Next, we're going to add one and a half cans of sweetened condensed milk. Don't make the mistake of buying evaporated milk. They sit right next to each other in the grocery store. One has sugar in it and one added sugar and one does not. So we want the sweetened condensed milk. One and a half cans. Once we get this all in here, we're just gonna mix it up and scrape the sides of our bowl at least once. Not even a minute's worth of mixing. Just want everything combined. I like to shut my machine off and scrape.
scrape the sides a little bit. Okay, now we're going to slowly add the lime juice. I'm going to turn down my mixer to low. Just let it drizzle in. Now I can turn the speed up a little bit. I'm going to turn it off and scrape the sides again. You can use a stand mixer, you know, like that one there. I just find this so much easier with this recipe. Um, you don't need to get a big stand mixer out at all. Splashing all over the place here. Okay. So that's it for the filling. I'm going to let those beaters soak because we're going to whip some cream in a few minutes. And I need those beaters. So let me move this out of the way. This is my pre-baked pie shell. This is my filling. It's nice and creamy. I'm going to pour it in. Let's see if it's all going to fit, because like I said, I usually use a deep dish, but I think it's going to be fine. Just smooth it over. Yeah, that works. You don't have to buy a deep dish if you don't have one. That's it right there. So that's going to go into the 350 oven, and it's going to bake for about 15 minutes. It doesn't take very long, we just want to cook the eggs. When you take it out, it's going to still have a little bit of a jiggle in the center. That's fine. You're going to let it cool to almost room temperature, not quite, and then cover it with some plastic wrap and then refrigerate it for a few hours. I like to make it in the morning and serve it at night or make it the day before and serve it the next day. So I'm going to set this right here. This is the pie that I made yesterday for this video. This is my deep dish pan. I like it. it. One thing I do like about it is there's no worries about the crust trying to creep over the edge while you're pressing it in. So a deep dish is good for that. So there it is, that's our key lime pie. It could be eaten just like that, but we are going to whip some cream. What did I do with my, oh, this is another thing. I like to keep the bowl that I'm going to whip my cream in, in the refrigerator. It just helps the cream set up more quickly than a warm room temperature bowl. So we're going to add, this is a pint. I add most of it, at least a cup, cup and a half. Boy, I am splattering everywhere. I opened it up before we started because Sometimes it's really hard to get that little pull tab off. So we've got cream in the bowl. Yeah, my everywhere. No, I guess I'm doing okay here. And then we're going to add some vanilla and some powdered sugar. It doesn't take much, maybe a tablespoon. The pie's going to be sweet, so not a lot of sugar is necessary. These are my beaters, they're fine. I was just mixing that filling. Now, something else I wanna tell you. Please don't be tempted to buy whipped topping in the tub. There's nothing like real whipping cream. And this recipe with real whipping cream and fresh lime juice and a homemade graham cracker crust is the best way to go. So we're going to mix this up. Start on a very low speed. You probably saw my blooper on my last video, what happened. I didn't start at a low speed. Um, and you might even want to cover the bowl because even on a low speed, sometimes it 
starts to fly out. But we're gonna mix this up. It's gonna take a few minutes. When you're whipping cream, you always want to start at a low speed and then just gradually up the speed until you get, my, I only have three speeds on this mixer, so. But I'll get up to high and it'll take a few minutes. All right, this looks pretty good. There's our cream. I'm gonna go just another few seconds, give it a little bit more peaks. You just don't want to make it so stiff that it starts to look lumpy. There. Now, all we have left to do is decorate our pie. So, you have lots of choices when it comes to the whipping cream. The easiest thing to do is just spread whipping cream all over the top. I like to leave an edge so you can actually see what kind of pie it is. So, you know, maybe leave an inch. Uh, you could pipe little rosettes across the top so each piece has a pretty little blob of whipping cream. Uh, the last time I made this, I put it in a piping bag and made pretty swirls all around. I just thought today I would um, stir it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be complicated, whatever you do. Just, I think what's kind of important here is so that you don't cover the whole pie so you can see that it is a key lime pie. So just, like I said, if you have a piping bag, this is prettier. But I didn't want to use the piping bag today because not everybody has one and I didn't want you to think you had to go out and get one. Just kind of make your little blobs and then maybe build up the center a little bit. And if you do this and you think, well, I don't like the way that looks, just spread it. Spread it and flatten it a little bit. But I kind of like the freeform look of this rather than perfect little rosettes. That's just my, my style. So there. Now, all I have left to do is add some zest to kind of decorate it. You could make candied lime slices and all that, but, you know, why add something complicated to such an easy recipe? This is so easy. Anybody can do this. Now, you can use this zester. If you don't have one, use a, the small grate on a cheese grater. But um, normally I do it like this and it collects in here. But when I'm going to use it as a garnish, you can turn it around and just put it right over and just keep moving it so you don't get the, um, you don't want the white part of the, the pith. You want just the green. And just go over your pie and it doesn't have to just stay on the cream. It can go anywhere and everywhere. So that is a key lime pie or a Persian lime pie in this, in this instance. But like I said, don't wait for key limes to come in season. We've got spring right here and summer's coming and this is a great dessert. I plan on making one of these for Easter, but this is the key lime pie. Now, how easy was that? Anybody can do this. Even if you don't buy a pie crust and you don't buy bottled lime juice and you don't buy fake whipped cream. Don't do any of those. Just do what we did today and you will be amazed with the results. If you make this, let me know how you like it. I appreciate feedback all the time. Enjoy. Bye.